advanced accounting, 7A investment and sub equity method. This is actually 7B. I'm going to change the description here. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep, our email and our website. The book Cost Accounting for Dummies will be out in March of 2013 and I'm teaching a free open course if you'd like to attend. So what I have here is a question that a student sent. Investment and subsidiary using the equity method. So on January 1st, 1-1, J buys 30% of K for $500,000 and it's mentioned here that J, the buyer, exercises significant influence over K, the subsidiary, and if that's the case, that should be a red flag or a highlight that you use the equity method of accounting for this subsidiary. And what that implies is that it's almost as if K, the subsidiary, is part of J. And going further, what that means is, is that K, the subsidiary's net income, will be included in part in J, the parent, and that K's dividends will be accounted for in part in J the parent. So the question that was student submitted to me was what is the balance of K's investment, the parent, or J, J is in Jack's investment, the parent in K the subsidiary at the end of the year 1231. The student was given this information and you've seen this set up in other advanced accounting videos that I've done. So we have balance sheet items. These are the asset items in the balance sheet and then I subtract liabilities and I come up with net assets. Here's the book value of those assets and liabilities and here's the fair value. And you can see that we have one difference between book value and fair value which happens to be the building's value net of depreciation. The book value is 700,000. The fair value of the building net of depreciation is 900,000 and you can see we've got a difference of 200,000 blue minus green, the difference between the two there in the formula. So the question again is, what's the balance of J's investment in K once we get to the end of the year? And there's really three items that affect the investment. J's beginning balance at purchase is $500,000, which is J's cost. And I put up here in bold and italic. The equity method is as if you own the company, and if you own the company, you would add the earnings generated and you would subtract the dividends paid. And let me state again that the J is going to have an, an, an asset account called investment in K. Investment in K. That is the account that we're talking about. So you can see that I put down here in brown J's investment in K. It's, this is going to be an asset account on J's books. So J, the parent, is going to add 30% of K's net income because we find out at the top that J bought 30% of the company. And we're given in the problem that K's net income was 400000 So we take 30% times 400000 in blue and we get J's share of K's earnings. We subtract from the investment in K account, J's share of the dividends. Again, J bought 30%, so we're given the dividend number of the problem, and if I click on the cell here, we see 30% of the dividend paid is a subtraction because that's what's being going out the door to shareholders. And again, this is as if J and K are the same company. When earnings come in the door, that's an increase in the asset account, the value of the investment. And when dividends are paid, that's money going out the door under the equity method. That's a reduction, a subtraction from the investment account. The other thing we subtract, the third one, is a little more complicated. You can see that there's a difference between the book value and the fair value in the asset account. We're also told in the question that we depreciate the value of the building on a straight line basis. And we're going to have a different amount of depreciation depending on whether we use book value or fair value. Under book value, it's going to be the 700,000 in blue divided by 10, or 70,000 a year. If I put the fair value of the building on my books, 
and I depreciated it, $900,000 in blue divided by 10 is 90,000. The difference between those two numbers is what we call excess depreciation. It's excess because we posted the value of the asset as 900,000 rather than 700,000 and if we consolidate one of the things you've seen throughout the advanced accounting videos is that we get rid of or eliminate any difference between fair value and book value because it's as if J and K are the same company therefore we should use the book value of J in consolidation so there's that excess depreciation number of 20,000 since J bought 30% of the company, 30% of the excess, or $6,000, $20,000 times 30%, is a reduction in the value of the investment. So if I add up all the, the beginning balance of $500,000 plus all the changes, I find that the ending balance of the investment in K on J's books as an asset account is $584,000. That's as far as we're going to get on this video. Again, this has been Advanced Accounting 7B. Here's our email and our website, the free open course on the book, and if you have an interest in other Excel documents and videos, you can find them on the website, stltest.net. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.